In this screencast, we're going to go through a simple demonstration of the protein purification software. We'll look at how it can be used, and we'll have a go at purifying a simple protein. So across the top, we've got a number of different tabs. And each one of these tabs allows us to access different parts of the program. So first of all, we're going to go to Start, and we're going to start from the beginning. And in this example, we're going to use this Easy Mixture 3 here. So each one of these mixtures is a mix of sample proteins to which you have to identify one single watt. So in this one, there's only three, so we'll have a look at that. Easy Mix 3 and OK. So we'll go for number one out of the three, and OK to that. And it tells me that the enzyme is active. Protein 1 is stable for several hours at temperatures up to 40 degrees and pH values between 2.5 and 11.5. So we know to keep it cold and we know we've got a wide range of pHs to play with. So I'll OK that. First thing we're going to do is have a look at it on a gel to find out a bit about its properties. So to do that we'll click the page tab, then the two-dimensional gel page. So this shows us all the proteins that are in our mix. You see we have three different proteins. These two across the bottom have the same size. These two have the same PI. So we need to find out which one we're interested in. So we'll go to page, and now we're going to do an immunoblot. Aha! So this is the protein that we're interested in. It has a size of 40 kilodaltons and a PI of 7.5. So now we'll go back to the Kamasi blot. So we have two options. We need to separate on the principles that we know. We know there's a difference in size between these two, and we know there's a difference in PI between these two. So I just get up my drawing tool. Now if we imagined we had a pH down here at 7, everything on this side is going to be positively charged. And everything on this side is going to be negatively charged. The first thing we're going to do is to use ion exchange chromatography. Now ion exchange chromatography separates on the basis of charge. So I'll hide my gel, page, hide gel. Now we're going to go to separation and here we find ion exchange chromatography. Now it's given us a number of different examples and if we click on info it'll tell us a little bit more about them. So you can go and have a read through this information. There's lots and lots of detail here. I know that q binds to negatively charged proteins. I know that we're going to use a salt gradient to elute it. So the salt will displace the protein. It acts to counteract the charge of the protein itself. So we'll click on that. OK. Now, from the 2D gel, when we draw the line at pH 7, what we discovered that our protein was positively charged. So it's not going to stick to the column, it's going to go straight through. So we're going to change, keep with our pH at 7, and click OK. The salt gradient is also fine, so we'll click OK on that. And here we go. So now we have two peaks, one peak here and one peak here. The purple line is the salt gradient. Remember, our protein was positively charged, so it won't have stuck to the column, so it's going to be in this fraction here. The other protein will have been negatively charged, and so it's going to be stuck to the column, and it will need the salt to wash it off. If we want to double-check that, we can go to Fractions, and we can try Enzymatic Activity, and there we go. The activity is in that peak there. So the next thing we want to do is pull those fractions. So we're going to say, take all of the fractions between 10, which is here, and 30, which is here. So if we click on OK, that's pulled them for us. So now we've got 20 milligrams of our protein and it's 100% yield. So we're doing really well on this. Let's OK. So we can have another quick look on the gel now to see what it looks like. There we go. Now we've only got two proteins. The one that was here has been taken away by the ion exchange. Now these two proteins have the same PI. That means that they have the same isoelectric point. So we can't use ion exchange to separate them. They do, however, have different sizes. So this one is bigger than this one. 
So we need to separate on the basis of size. Now the technique that does that is called size exclusion chromatography or gel filtration. So we'll just get rid of this, we'll hide our gel, we're going to go to separation, and we'll go to gel filtration. Gel filtration separates on the basis of size. We need to pick one of these matrices to use. So I know Cephalcryl S200 is going to work. These ones all here will work. So let's pick G100. And we'll click OK. So now we have two peaks. Size exclusion chromatography works by passing the proteins through pores in a matrix. Big proteins have to go round the pores, so they have less volume to go through. Small proteins can go into the pores, so they have a bigger volume to go through. The larger the fraction number, the more volume that has been used. So our big protein is going to have come off first. The big protein is the one we want, and it's going to be in this fraction here. And we can double check that if we go to fractions, assay for activity, and there is our peak. So now we need to pool. So we want everything from 50 to 65. So I'm going to go to fractions, pool fractions. We want everything from 50 to 65. OK that. Now you can see we've got a yield of nearly 100%. And if we have a look at our gel now, you'll see that we have a single peak. So we've managed to purify out our proteins.